According to the U.S. Border Patrol, the number of children caught entering the U.S. alone has skyrocketed to more than 47,000 in just the first six months of this year. With 1,200 immigrants surrendering themselves to Border Patrol agents every single day, the agency is overwhelmed. So many of them are coming in on buses, others are being flown here, and this facility this morning is struggling to figure out what to do with all those children. These kids are coming from Central America, from Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador. They're traveling up through Mexico into the United States through Texas. The federal government is looking at several sites in New York as potential shelters, including a rundown former Walmart building. They want to house some of these people at the at the Border Patrol Academy while they're awaiting processing. The Border Patrol now worried about a virus outbreak. And sources tell me right now, all that's separating the sick from the healthy, this caution tape. The Chinese are paying 50,000, the Indians are paying 10 to 20,000. All the Central Americans, the average is about 7,000. So it's the cartels pushing these groups across the river to tie up our agents. Who or what is coming in we don't know, and we won't know until something bad happens. What changed was the fact that we were engaging in this catch and release program, and word spreads fast. And this crisis that some call it crisis, we have to view as an opportunity. They are the best that we have. Here, Governor Brewer's office confirming today FEMA officials are overseeing a detention facility in Nogales, Arizona, and that's where these kids are going to be housed. Welcome to this special July 4th, 2014 edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Leanne McAdoo. Well, today is the day, of course, that we celebrate our Declaration of Independence. Obviously, originally from the Kingdom of Great Britain, but now we just really like to show our patriotism, how much we love this country, we love our freedom. 238 years of this freedom. Now, 4th of July is typically a day marked with patriotic celebrations, people proudly waving their flags. But it seems these days that the only day that you can proudly wave your American flag is on the 4th of July. Currently, we are labeling patriots and veterans as domestic terrorists and racist. People are actually being called racist if they wave their American flag. Meanwhile, we have people that are ruling us in absolute lawlessness and setting about to implode this country. Now, typically what you'll see around this time of year is your elected officials going out and doing their public display of how great America is. We're a nation of laws, a successful democracy. Meanwhile, we're in the throes of an immigration crisis, and we have a president who says that he's going to bypass Congress altogether once again and use executive action to further his immigration agenda. Now, the president himself, to our knowledge, he hasn't even visited the border or any of these border facilities to see the reality of the crisis that we are seeing with this influx of illegal immigrants. Our team has visited the border. We've covered it extensively. And what we've witnessed there is total collapse and absolute lawlessness. Joining me now is Jakari Jackson, Joe Biggs, and John Bown. Now, guys, looking at the absolute lawlessness of the military bases all over the U.S. being set up as staging grounds for people who have illegally entered the country. I mean, President Obama hasn't bothered to go and visit these facilities yet, but you guys were there. You witnessed it firsthand. Describe what you saw. I'd say in a word, treasonous. It's just out of control completely. Yeah, it's an occupation. We are under occupation. And that is frightening. I mean, we've seen all of the footage o over the course of the last few weeks. What do you think about the fact, Joe, that Obama hasn't been to the facility yet? He sent out some of his minions. Well, it's funny. The Obama administration is saying that these fences along our border are racist. But if I'm not mistaken, isn't there a fence around the White House? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I just, isn't that racist? What are they doing about that? No one's trying to go to Washington right now and take that fence down. But, you know, the border fence, that's racist. You know, it's funny, when I went down to Lackland Air Force Base, Jed Johnson, the Secretary of Homeland Security, scurried away and ran. And then Nancy Pelosi, once again, down in Brownsville, 
you know, once you go out there and you try to hit them with some real questions about the issue, they run from you. you yeah, know? and the thing about Pelosi, she's all talking about how if she could, she would take all the kids home with her. You and I were both down there. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe I miscounted, but I counted a grand total of zero children she took home with her. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't see any kids yeah. go with her. Well, what about all the kids that are homeless in this country? I just went to go get lunch a few days ago, and I saw a homeless kid walking down the street. Absolutely. I mean, we're talking about bringing in kids that can't speak the language, they don't understand our culture, they don't understand what it is to be a naturalized citizen. All they're going to do is add more of an economic destruction to our economy. And then you have to understand, Bound, because then you have to have the cultural sensitivity. Then you can't wear an American flag to, to school because you may offend somebody. Well, I had friends who died in combat to become citizens of this country, Mexican-American men who fought and died in Iraq and Afghanistan to go through the process the correct way. Absolutely. And these kids are being shipped over, they're being flown over by the busloads, by the plane, and we're wasting our resources and draining our economy. And there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do it, and this is no way the right way to do it. And Absolutely. all of America knows that. Uh, you can feel it. Yeah. Well, just I like in California yesterday when they stormed the buses and they were protesting. You know, finally people are standing up and they're saying, no, go back. Well, let's talk a little bit about how you went to Lackland Air Force Base. You were there to go to a press conference, and there were no other media there. You were the only one that was there, and they fled. Yeah, I got on the Department of Homeland Security website. I printed out the press release. He told me about it. We took it down there because, you know, I had this feeling that if I got down there, there'd be some kind of excuse like there always is with the government. We get down there, and they're like, whoa, 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 we're not expecting any kind of media. What are you doing here? And next thing you know, they go grab a Secret Service guy. They go grab a Homeland Security guy, and they come over. They take my ID, my military ID, my VA card, everything. Take the plates down on the vehicle and harass us. Meanwhile, Jed Johnson and, and company get you know pulled out of there, mm -hmm. thrown in their motorcade, and you know drive off because they wanted to say that they wanted the media there. I think it was just a, it was just a, another beard, another famous beard that the government throws on all the time. Jay yeah, Johnson is responsible for creating this mass exodus, this illegal, destructive exodus to our country. Right, they're continually sending mixed messages, and the mainstream media really isn't doing anything to help this. Um, basically, the way they're covering it, they're clearly showing what side they're taking. They're you know supporting the collapse of America. We have today anchor Matt Lauer. He declared. We want you to weigh in on this. Tweet out to the hashtag refugee riders. So now they're refugees. So they're just they're pulling out this whole thing is that all these children are flooding the borders and their families because there's some crisis there. What has changed in Central America in the last two years, few years? Nothing. Well, you got to think, though, it was funny, though, when Jakari and I were down in Brownsville, uh, Pelosi was talking about, well, all these people, these, you know, these families, these young children from Honduras are, are fleeing to America, and it's our job to take care of them. What they don't mention is in 2009, we're the one who funded the coup that took over Honduras. We put in the new government that now kills all the people there. You know, so it's another instance of us creating terrorists for yeah, no you, reason. You create the crisis, and then when they come here, and it's like, well, 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 we, well we, have to, we have to let them in because they're here. And that's the thing I keep hearing from these people. Like, well, these children didn't ask to come here. Maybe they didn't, but, you know, mm -hmm. we can't just bust them in. Now I hear reports that they're looking in the city of Dallas to start using some of these abandoned schools to house these people. Up in New York, they're talking about using old burnout Walmart facilities because we have so many people, we can't even keep them in the churches and on the military bases. Yeah, now our Border Patrol wants to quit. These guys are getting fed up. They, they, they can't. They're and not they know it's a joke. We, we, with both of you guys, we drove through the Border Patrol checkpoint, once with Bound and once with, with Biggs, and both times we pulled up, we said, hey, man, you, you guys know you're paying the bus tickets. <laughs> Those stations, yeah. now the Border Patrol themselves that are helping the, the ranchers and the mm -hmm. bankrupt cities north of the border, they're a tremendous help. Yeah. And, but they're, they're, ha they have to sit on their hands, too, because they don't have enough resources. But the Border Patrol stations themselves, they're checking us. The TSA is checking us. And meanwhile, America, they're all coming up through our border. We're being invaded. And the President of the United States is letting this happen. Yeah. Wake up, man. But yeah, the thing more, about it is, because yeah. you remember, both times we went through, everybody said they knew what was going on. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, you know they're mm -hmm. doing it, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's no big yeah. deal. Well, there's, it looks like more yeah. civilians are willing to step up the plate and help watch the border than the actual Border Patrol are, you know, when that report that I saw that you did. Yeah, yeah, uh, there are a lot of volunteers that come down, give their time from all over the country to help these ranchers, and it, it really doesn't dawn on you until you're standing there on their land realizing that while you're talking to them, that there may be 
uh, and, and this terminology, migrants, mm -hmm. immigrants, mm -hmm. no. These people are illegal aliens. Right. And I've even added the terminology illegal citizens because what is a citizen except somebody that enjoys the rights and protection of their country? Well, these people are illegally enjoying the rights and protection of our country. The naturalized citizens like ourselves and the rest of America are here on this 4th of July witnessing our president mm -hmm. naturalize for, I think, the third year in a row on the 4th of July his liberal agenda to... Right to basically cloud and piven the uh, country. Yeah, well, the vice exactly. president of the Border Patrol Union said that he wants the National Guard to come down and help out on the administrative side so the Border Patrol agents themselves can actually get back to the border. But the, the thing is, though, like you said, they're not really doing anything. So I asked him, I said, I heard there's reports of militia coming down, and they're willing to help out the Border Patrol. Would that be some kind of help that you'd be willing to take? And he said, no. He said, it doesn't make sense. They don't have arresting authority. And I looked at him and I said, guess what? Who are you guys arresting? You're not arresting anybody. Right. Everyone, the, the gates are open and you're letting everyone in and you're giving them a health card and you're giving them food and you're letting them go. <laughs> and, and you're letting them make what they called anchor babies. So when the, the, the immigrants come in and they have a kid, do you think a judge is going to kick them out after that? No, their kid is now a U.S. citizen and they will stay. We're, we're talking about the destruction of this country, hyper destruction of this country by our government. That's what we're talking about here. And it's a tactic that they're using. I mean, you see yeah. how the main, the, the lamestream media is covering it. They won't even call them illegal immigrants. They call them undocumented immigrants. Um, ABC's Good Morning America, they just simply called them immigrants. So now, I mean, what a slap in the face to people who have been spending thousands of dollars every year, waiting year after year, doing everything they can to play by the law to become citizens of the United well, States of America. So and then now we're out. just inviting all these people in and saying, eh. They, they, they use that hearts and mind card every time. Look at these kids. Look at these kids. You know, it's just look at the kids. It's not look at these kids who are bringing in, you know, hepatitis and tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, though, is the people at the border who are checking for the diseases and screening them, they're basic EMTs. They are not in any kind of way trained to deal with diseases like that. Well, as we speak, there was a TB outbreak in Sacramento at a high school. And Sacramento, 20% of their population, or 19% of their population, is undocumented immigrants. But you know what? They're illegals. Well, I just so, went right. back to Lackland Air Force Base, and that's where they have the outbreak of the swine flu. Mm. From when I went a couple weeks ago until today, it looks like a contagion, like an outbreak scene. All these huge tents, medical personnel all over the place, but there's nothing going on there. And mm -hmm. there, there's, you, know? you got to consider other things that are coming in, because when you drive into California, you're asked, are you carrying any exotic fruit or exotic animals? Why are they asking you that? Mm -hmm. When the borders, well, borders are wide open, there's no telling what's coming across that border. Well, if you, we, we're starting to get reports on a few things that are coming across. In 1943, we, we eradicated the fever tick that got into our livestock. It was a huge problem for our livestock, our cattle industry in South Texas and the South. Well, now as the illegals are crossing that water, they're getting the larva all over their clothes and their skin, and they're bringing that back. In. So that's going to eradicate our already struggling beef industry. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, and, and then not to mention the bed bug outbreaks that we've had in the mm -hmm. past here in America. You know, the, the amount of bed bug outbreaks that we're going to about to see, TB outbreaks, there's no telling. And then the, the mutation, the hybridization of what they're bringing up into what we already have. It's a complete disaster. And these are just the people that we know coming through. Mm -hmm. for, for the hundreds that we know coming through every day, double that, that's who's getting through that we don't see. Right, and we have uh, reports now that the medical staff here at these border facilities are being told to keep your mouth shut about the diseases that you're you're witnessing here or face arrest. Yeah, I went down and got yeah. pictures of those, uh, the, what they called the brown shirt guys, the security mm -hmm. forces, driving around Lackland Base, you know, watching. And I tried to talk to one of the personnel out there, and they just kind of scurried by. They just kept walking. They wouldn't look over my way whatsoever and give me any kind of acknowledgement. Yeah, because you remember I talked to the ice whistleblower, and he said, yeah, we have people come in with TB, and... I said, well, what kind of treatment do you give? He said, well, we, uh, we examine them, we give them chest x-rays and all this, but they still have those, uh, those illnesses in the facilities. And the thing he told me, the kicker is, 
they have such a, a such small bed space in those facilities that they just let a lot of people go. Right. They don't have time to quarantine people. They they got to get them, pass them through as quickly as they can, and send them on into the interior. But the funny thing is, though, is President Obama set aside two billion dollars for this, but we have they have more. no money. Yeah, they're asking for more, but they have no money to take care of this stuff. They have no money to get the CDC out there, and that's a whole other issue. They don't even care anything about what's going on down there. But you would think we would have the money with $2 billion to be able to take care of this stuff. Where is that money going? Now, John, you actually reported on some of these border towns or towns close to the border that are, are actually being bankrupt from having to house and take care of all the, of these illegals. Meanwhile, they're getting absolutely no help from the federal government, which created this. Well, yeah, they're actually, it's not so much housing as it is burying them in their local cemeteries because there's just so many of them that die from dehydration and wild animals. Uh, killing them, basically, and then other causes. There, there are women that are coming up now, pushed by Jay Johnson to get up here, young girls that are being raped repeatedly on the way up and then killed when they get here. And the, the, to understand what's actually going on, you have to understand that what I keep repeating is the funnel effect, where the border crossing, where the border stations are, the coyotes bring them up, and then they have to go around that. So they have to go through people's land. And uh, it just all depends on uh, how hospitable that land is. That landowner, right. Right. So uh, as far as these towns, Falfurious, we spoke with the county judge, and uh, he reported that uh, the year before they spent $800,000 just burying, de dealing with all the uh, things they deal with with the uh, illegals. But you go to that town, and it's completely broke. I mean, mm -hmm. it, uh, Detroit's bad, but Falfurious is pretty bad, too. And it's just amazing to see that and to be there and witness it and realize that this is coming to the rest of America. This isn't right. fear-mongering. This is about being smart and realizing that this is coming. Right. And, and we all have to get together. We have to do something now because this is a hyperactivity that the administration is pushing as soon as they can. Well, let's watch a clip from that report. It was the loss of oil and gas revenue compounded by the amount that we spent. And that, that figure is de dealing with autopsies. It's dealing with wear and tear of the vehicles, the sheriff department, the JPs, the magistrates, the death certificates, all the, the paperwork that's entailed, getting out to these areas that are very, very remote. I personally have been taken to pronounce a body when the, police, the sheriff officer with me says, oh, there went the transmission. And we had to call a record to come get us. Thank God for Border Patrol. They were able to take us to where uh, the immigrant was. And a lot of these immigrants are dying of dehydration. Is that the main cause? Uh, we refer to them as the elements. You know, it's compounded by the 100 plus weather, degrees out there, rattlesnake bites. And a lot of them we order autopsies because we don't know uh, what was the cause of death. We now do autopsies on everybody and DNA on everybody. All these expenses, you know, uh, we don't budget for. And we've had to, and the law says we have to pay for them. And ha have you asked for grants from the federal government? We have gotten nothing from the federal government. Uh, Governor Perry's office uh, last year stepped up to the plate and they helped us with $150,000 to the sheriff. We were in Austin, Texas this week and they're going to help us with another 150000 That's to defray a lot of the costs that the sheriff department has. There was a boom time with the gas and oil and the creameries. In 2007 when I took office, our taxable value was $1 million, $1 billion, $93 million. Last year was 541 million. We've lost more than 60% of our oil and gas. So that, that makes, you know, and we live by oil and gas. In 1959, we were the only one in South Texas that had an all concrete stadium. Mm -hmm. We had four dealerships and we had a hospital. Are you aware of the administration of Obama, how they're professing to the Central American countries that if you come across the border and proclaim that you're a dreamer, uh, especially these younger kids that are coming across, that you will receive amnesty. Uh, I think that you can't uh, make the rules just to, uh, to apply them. If you're going to be fair, let's be fair to everybody. You know, if you're going to allow people to come in, you should have standards, you should have a program in play that would allow them to enter the country legally, not illegally.
Wow, John, so it looks like we are seeing the typical cloward piven strategy collapsing America under the weight of a welfare state. There you can get more people on welfare, you can shore up the Democratic voter base, and then you can create sort of a national solution to yeah, this the, uh, Hunger Game society. Well, yeah, the national solution, according to Cloward and Piven, is a guaranteed annual income. Mm -hmm. So their strategy was based off of the 1965 Watts riots, and they saw the tension that was created by that in the country, so they realized the only way to get the poor what they want, which is basically, i.e., socialism, because socialism works great until they run out of your money, right? Mm -hmm is to scare the pants off of the entire country and our culture and bring us into, through fear, bring a welfare state that the rest of us can agree upon. Well, that's never going to happen because this is a capitalist society. There are people that live on all levels of wealth and mm -hmm. of poverty, and that's the American way. Their guaranteed income is never going to work, and it's actually a strategy that uh, is has a lot of liberal leanings that we are now dealing with. Right, and once again, how are we going to pay for all of this? We have elected officials that aren't even allowed to enter these facilities. We have a representative in Oklahoma. He was told that he needed to make an appointment for three weeks away if he wanted to get inside the facility. It was uh, Jim Bridenstine, Republican out of Oklahoma, and he's basically wants to know what are they trying to hide? Is there some child trafficking, yeah, human trafficking going <laughs> on? <laughs> you I mean, know? At least they're getting denied as well, too. I don't feel so bad. They right, got but a these, lot are to hide. That, <laughs> these are people that are supposed to be, you know, looking out for us and saying what's going on inside of this federal facility. Yeah, well. And Jakari, I mean, you actually witnessed firsthand where our taxpayer dollars are going. Yeah, it was very surprising to me. We went to McAllen, Texas, and we talked to the emergency manager. And we were having a conversation. He says, yeah, they're paying for their bus tickets. I said, who's paying for their bus tickets? He was like, the Border Patrol. I was like, really? Yeah, this, is, <laughs> this is some very interesting information you're giving me here. Right. Because you think about an agency who is supposed to be housing these people, uh, you know, prior to their, uh, to their court dates. But what they're doing is they say, hey, here's your order to appear in court, and here's your bus ticket to anywhere in the continental United States. So which is to say if uh, which is to say if these guys go all the way up to Maine or if these guys go all the way up to Washington State, do you really expect them to drive all the way to South Texas just to get deported? To of course they don't. Ex absolutely, and that's a problem we've we've always had. And now the border patrol is strained as it is. I mean, yeah, right. They're going to get lost in the court system. Well, that's what they do, though. Half of them don't even show up to, to their to their court dates at all whatsoever. Exactly. It's actually ninety percent. And Jakari, you were actually able to speak to some of these representatives before all of the people at the border facilities were given the directive to keep their mouths shut. We have the medical staff being told, keep your mouth shut or you're going to be arrested. John, don't you think that the taxpayers deserve to know the dangers that are we're risking here? There's all kinds of contagious diseases floating around these border facilities. Well, I hope everybody's paying attention because the folks that I spoke with, Dr. Mike Vickers and his wife, Linda Vickers, uh, who also operate a uh, volunteer organization that deals with illegals coming onto their land. He's also a veterinarian and very knowledgeable about all the diseases in that area that they've dealt with over the decades. Well, let's watch that report. Well, these people are bringing tens of thousands of larvae on their clothing into Texas whenever they go down to the riverbank and uh, brush up against that uh, Carrizo cane and uh, all the property they go through, uh, these larvae are dropped off. Uh, the larvae then get on, on a plant and then get on our white-tailed deer. Consequently, there's a tick zone that runs all the way from uh, Del Rio to Brownsville, and, and the uh, USDA and the Animal Health Commission have tick riders that try to catch this livestock uh, coming across the river and, and get it caught. So people, though, uh, uh, are still coming, and there's been some uh, properties that uh, have come into quarantine uh, miles off the river uh, that even had high fences where the livestock and the deer could not infect it uh, that were affected beca because of the human trafficking and the, and the people coming through uh, bringing those larvae. So uh, another disease, pyroplasmosis, uh, transmitted by a tick 
we actually, uh, I personally feel like uh, that tick showed up, that infected tick showed up uh, coming in on people's clothing out of Mexico. Uh, hoof and mouth disease is on the horizon. A lot of these people are coming from countries that have hoof and mouth disease, and that would be devastating for the United States livestock industry if hoof and mouth disease shows up in the United States. And it's a big concern because a lot of these people that are sneaking in here could have that virus on their tennis shoes. Uh, that's, a, that's a huge concern for us. Um, it would be absolutely devastating to, to the United States agriculture industry if that if that disease shows up. And there's a, a multiplicity of other diseases. Most recent swine flu. flu. Uh, this swine flu can be transmitted from people to the swine industry. Not only are humans and drugs being smuggled in, but horses and cattle are being smuggled in, especially in the Trans-Pecos area where there's not a big presence of Animal Health Commission uh, people, inspectors, uh, USDA, and even Border Patrol. So. Uh, uh, most recent within the past couple of years, there's been diseased animals come through our Trans-Pecos. Horses being brought in with pyroplasmosis out of Mexico and uh, cattle being brought in to be sold at markets in Texas that are Mexican origin cattle that actually have brucellosis. And uh, that's affecting our, our, that could affect our brucellosis free status here in Texas down the road if it's not contained and, and stopped. Nothing to worry about there, right? I mean, now you spoke with the CDC earlier this week, Joe. What did they have to say? What are they doing to help this? Well, one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to the CDC was that last week I spoke to Stu Harris down in El Paso, Texas. He's the vice president of the Border Patrol Union in that area. And he said that he personally tried to contact them and said, hey, there's a situation going down here across the border you might be interested in, and told them about the different diseases that were coming through. And then I started thinking, I said, well, you said that there are, there's already a screening process for these kids coming through, so who's doing it? He said, basic EMT guys. Hmm. So that was the scariest thing. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to call CDC myself. So I called him, and the lady got on there and said it's not even part of our scope of practice, that all we're responsible for doing is training the boots on ground, basically, and giving them the proper guidance they need to do that job. But then I said, okay, are you actually talking to the Border Patrol? Are you helping them? Are you giving them the knowledge they need? She said no. Wow. So we have a potential outbreak here, and the CDC isn't even around. Let's take a look at that. They are calling in regards to the unaccompanied persons that are uh, coming into the United States. Yes, the, the, about the 96,000 that have come in the past month, yes. And you want to know what the CDC is doing in regards to this information, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. The vice president of the Border Patrol Union, who is over these guys, said he has just contacted you guys, and you said it is not an issue for you to worry about. So they might be on call, but they're not going down there and taking care of the issues. Right now, Border Patrol agents are testing positive for tuberculosis, scabies, and pox. I definitely understand your concerns um, at this time. If you have additional questions in regards to this topic, um, I would have to escalate this information, or you can go on to the cdc.gov website and um, ask your inquiry on the website, and they will respond by email. Uh, but this topic is out of scope for myself and the CDC info. Um, they do not provide any additional information other than that. Uh, well, who, who's going to go down to the border? When is this, when is this going to happen? Because right, we don't have right that now, information. Right now, right now, basic EMTs are supposedly screening these kids, which means they're getting past our borders, and they've made it to Lackland Air Force Base, which is in San Antonio, and there's a swine flu outbreak. There's no one here that could speak to you about this information. Why, that, why not? That's your job. It is out of scope for the CDC info. You are speaking to CDC info, not CDC. Is there a number I can call to talk to somebody? No, sir. We do not have information in regards to that. So there's no way that I can report a an outbreak. I have to go to a website and hope that someone gets to it in time. If you'd like to report an outbreak, you can report that to the state or local health department. But it's not the CDC's problem. It's not something that the CDC regulates. So what is it that you guys do then? Since you don't go down to border situations where there's a crisis where kids are coming over and bringing these uh, viruses like MRSA and things like that into our country, since that's not an issue that you guys take care of, what is it that the CDC actually does then? Well, the role of CDC info is to provide general health information in regards to health risks 
in the world. We provide reliable, consistent science-based health information on behalf of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Are you guys, provi are you guys providing information to the Border Patrol then to help them? I've already stated that we are not. Okay, thank you. And so it's not just contagious diseases that we have to worry about. Uh, we're also witnessing the overrunning of our country, but we're also witnessing the rollout of the domestic security force. Now, the medical staff inside Lackland Air Force Base said that they were threatened with arrest by a government-contracted security force. And they say that this security force is from the Baptist Family and Children's Services, which is what the Department of Health and Human Services hired to run the Lackland camp. Now, if you go to the Baptist Family and Children's Services website, it says that they serve God by giving families a new start. And of course, that's all well and good. They're taking care of these families. But when did they become a security force? When are they providing, you know, when do they get the authority to arrest medical staff like for a carrying spearhead. a cell phone? They're spearhead for the Obama administration. Well, tellingly, in this article, they call themselves the brown shirts. A counselor inside the Lackland Air Force Base said, it was a very submissive atmosphere. Once you stepped onto the grounds, you abided by their laws, the brown shirt laws. Now, of course, this is telling because in the run-up to the 2008 presidential election, Barack Obama promised that he would work to implement a domestic security force which would rival that of the U.S. military. And many people dubbed this proposed force the brown shirts. It's a term um, used to kind of describe a Nazi assault force that they were charged with uh, arresting dissidents, silencing criticism, and execution of anyone who couldn't be re-educated. That's bizarre. We, we've reached a point, there was a few years ago, where the AmeriCorps in Wisconsin was having the white kids put white bracelets on so that they would remember the white to be, guilt. Yeah, white <laughs> guilt to be sensitive to uh, folks of other color or whatever. What they're doing is they're using these kids and they're planting these seeds of ignorance in their minds mm -hmm. and they're going to roll them out and as they're, you know, as their families come in, as, as more illegals come in, they're going to be added to that and then they're also going to add to the progressive voting agenda, which exactly, uh, will, will, will collapse our country. And then eventually they're going to take our gun rights away and everything like that. They'll, they'll embed all these thoughts in their mind, like you said. It'll be like this little rogue army that they're building up. Right, and these the brown shirts that are inside of these internment camps, they're not there keeping the peace between the migrants. They are there to arrest medical staff who might be caught with a you, cell phone. You said it again, though. I, talking... I did catch you. You said migrants. So <laughs> let, me, let me just tell you the definition of a migrant. A migrant is a person who moves regularly in order to find work, especially in harvesting crops, or it's an animal that shifts from one habitat to another. They are committing a crime when they set foot into our country. It's not, it's not some thing that's out there that that's, you know, we can debate. They are committing a crime. Joe Arpaio, why, why are my jails filling up with illegals? Why, why don't we send the military down to the border to deal with this criminal activity while the administration is acting like this is some humanitarian effort? So let's just stop calling this a humanitarian crisis. They keep trying to say it's racist because we have a border fence. I mean, if we go to Mexico, if we go to Canada, we're going to get stopped at a border. Exactly. In the United States of America, driving in the state of Texas with Texas license plates on your car, you get stopped in America. Hey, are you an American citizen? I was like, man, I don't want to play this game. Well, but. let's talk for a second about we are naturalized citizens. We're also made up of people that have worked hard to become citizens. Mm -hmm. We are an economy that is broke. We are led by a president that has no leadership. He's got the worst poll in history. Right. Uh, and, and we've all been stabbed in the back by this administration. This is, what's happening now is, it's, it's too much. It's right. too much for the American psyche to even deal with. And, well, I stared and, those brown shirts in the face today. I saw them down in Lackland. Let me tell you what, bring it. These guys <laughs> are weaklings. They ain't got nothing. So just keep on doing what you're doing, America. Stand up to these guys. Well, absolutely. I think it's very telling, being Independence Day and everything, that we have the people there that were able to reroute the buses. They were protesting. They were waving the American flag. They rerouted the buses. And the media is calling these people racist. They're saying they're doing it. These people are protesting the fact that we are aiding and abetting criminals, basically. They are being forced to pay to bust these illegals into San Diego or wherever they're being shipped. 
and people are fed up about it. And then all of a sudden, it's racist to wave the American flag. And people here say, like, you know, destroy the country. You can look at places like San, I think San Bernardino, California, the county out there. And was it 2009? They sent, spent about $60 million for welfare benefits for illegal immigrants. And that's just illegal immigrants. That's not anybody else in their county. So it's a very real impact as people just say, oh, you, you guys are racist. You say they, they're diseased and they're all gang members. No, not all of them have diseases. Not all of them have, not all of them have gang affiliation. But you have to look at the very, you know, real fact that this thing at the bottom level just cost us money. I mean, we, we train the Zetas, the, Zeta, the, the drug cartels, the only way through Mexico safely to our borders to get in our country. And our government trained the Zetas at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. So these guys are training them. Now they're the ones smuggling the kids there. It's just one big plot by the Obama administration you know, we to had just slowly destroy our country. And we want to stress that these illegal immigrants are not just coming from Central America and Mexico. They're coming from all over. They are 80% now other than Mexico, which means they're coming from Pakistan, India, China, mm -hmm. you name it. They're coming across our borders while our administration and the Border Patrol are dealing with all these kids. And it, it is just accelerating as we speak. Right. The borders are wide open. Let's take a look at that report. These cities just above the U.S.-Mexico border don't receive any federal funding. The law-abiding, land-owning residents of towns such as Falfurious, Texas, are overrun by a tsunami of illegals as a result of what's called the funnel effect. The militarization of the border, which includes checkpoints, barriers, and security technology, diverts the human smuggling operations into treacherous, searing, and rugged terrain that delivers many illegal aliens to their deaths. And ranch owners and Texas border volunteer founders Mike and Linda Vickers contending with the outcome. They're all contributing to organized crime by paying large sums of money to be brought in here. And to give you an example, uh, the Chinese are paying 50,000, the Indians are paying 10 to 20,000. All the Central Americans, the average is about 7,000. So, and the Mexicans, uh, uh, especially Southern Mexico, are paying 3,000. So it's a huge, huge uh, money event for the cartels, uh, probably even more lucrative than the drug business. As one of them was uh, climbing over the fence, he dropped uh, a package. And that package uh, was an Urdu dictionary. Urdu is a language uh, spoken in uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And in that uh, uh, translation book, Urdu and English, there were a lot of phrases circled and outlined. Do you speak Spanish? Do you speak English? You must pay in dollars. So we know that uh, special interest countries, in particular countries like Pakistan or Afghanistan that are not particularly friendly with our country, are slipping through here under the disguise of, and under the, uh, all this other uh, activity that's going on where these families are giving up and, and the Border Patrol uh, resources are being compromised. Well, a big thank you to the whole crew. You've done an amazing job covering the crisis at the border. And, you know, it seems like now more than ever, Americans really need to show their patriotism, wave those American flags every day of the year, not just the 4th of July. We've got to continue standing up to the tyranny, standing up to this lawlessness with the spirit of 1776. And in the spirit of 1776, we have a summer blowout special this weekend only. It's our July 4th Independence Day sale. Made in 1776 t-shirts are just 1776. And don't forget, we're running our Prison Planet Summer Special for a limited time. It's just $39.95 a year. It was three months free, and now you're getting five months free. That's 27% off the regular price. It goes from 15 cents a day to 11 cents a day. And remember, with 11 users, that is one penny a day. Now, thank you all so much for joining us here tonight. We'll see you again Monday at 7 p.m. Central. Happy 4th of July. Finally, on this special July 4th, 2014 edition of InfoWars Nightly News, I want to close out this transmission with a report to you, the viewers and listeners, of where InfoWars is right now. Because this operation belongs to you as much as it belongs to myself or Rob Dew standing to the left of me or the crew in there in the control room. 
We are all in this together, not just in the United States, but worldwide. The idea of human liberty, of due process, of freedom, that your home is your castle, that you have a right to privacy, that you have a right to self-defense, that you have a right to raise your children as you see fit, and to go to church or not go to church, to produce the art and literature that you want. This is a fight for basic freedom. And to have freedom, we've got to recognize tyranny from liberty. And more and more people worldwide, not just here in the U.S., are realizing that. The report is positive in many respects, but also negative in others. There's never been an awakening happening this big or this fast. But the establishment and the control freaks, the, the totalitarians, have never had as many tools of domination and control as they have now. But if we the people will all simply do small things every day to resist, every day to speak out, every day to get involved, we can defeat this system in the arena of ideas. We can have a velvet revolution, 1776 2.0, where we vote with our dollars to support institutions, media, and systems that promote freedom where we speak out against corruption, where we don't comply with corruption, where we engage in more and more forms of civil disobedience. Because when tyranny is the law of the land, it is not just our duty. It is not just our right. It is an act of survival to say no to those forms. So no matter what you do, no matter how big or how small, it is having an absolutely massive effect on the globalist. The power of the individual reaching out to other individuals with shared values is unstoppable. We can have a new enlightenment. We can have a new renaissance if we simply reach out and take it in our hands. That is the true fulfillment of the human spirit. And we stand here at the very crossroads. The report on InfoWars is we're reaching more people than ever. It's an incredible responsibility to be so successful. And I want to thank you for your prayers, your support, the fact that you're continually spreading the word. And I want you to realize that when you call into my radio show and say, you're the new Paul Revere, you're so great, Alex, that it actually upsets me. Because I want you to understand something. You are Paul Revere. You are the answer. You are the resistance. We are together in free association, loving liberty. And of course, I'm a modern Paul Revere, because we all are. We all have power. If you think that it's just Alex Jones that can be successful, if you think it's just Alex Jones that can take action, you're buying into the enemy's lies. You have the power. All over the country, they're arresting people that have lemonade stands. They're arresting people that put chalk on the ground with free speech messages on their own sidewalks that they paid for. And why are they doing that? Threatening a year in prison in Las Vegas, six months in jail in Austin because they're scared of you and your ideas being expressed that aren't globalist and aren't corporate and aren't monopolies. They want a monopoly of force. They don't want you to be able to defend yourself. They want a monopoly over your family with the state running your family. They want a monopoly over you going to a cashless Walmart buying Chinese slave goods. They want to dominate you. So the modern Paul Revere isn't just going to ride around and say to arms to arms, the British are coming. They're going to say to the info war, the globalist corporatists have already occupied us and recognize that they've taken over so that we can begin the process of resisting them like Gandhi did peacefully by simply marching to the sea. They had a tax on salt. You had to buy it from the British government, from the British East India Company at hundreds of times what it should cost. He marched hundreds of miles with thousands and thousands of people joining him and then hundreds of thousands to the sea and gathered the salt for himself and showed that they didn't have a monopoly of control. And that was the beginning of the end of that empire's control in that region. And it's the same thing here today. Your little acts of defiance, like Rosa Parks sitting at the front of the bus, will bring this tyranny to its knees. When they attack you, when they demonize you, when they come after you, remember it's because they are scared of what you stand for. They are scared of you not being a biological android that they can just program. July 4th is one of the great examples of underdogs defeating a military that never been stopped. And certainly our country's had its share of problems and has been demonized by modern tyrants because they're scared of what the documents say. Not that the documents were ever fully fulfilled or fully realized, but that if they were, it would symbolize a true 
new era of human exploration and freedom that I dream of and I know you dream of as well. So on this July 4th, 2014, from the heart of Alex Jones to all of you out there and from our whole crew here at InfoWars, the state of humanity is dire. But the sleeping giant is now waking to the fight and the challenge. And so the news couldn't be better. It is always darkest before the dawn, and the dawn is coming. So to all of you out there who have the same love of freedom as I do, we are kindred spirits, we are brothers, we are fellow travelers. That's a communist term, but I'm taking it back for humanity. In the great quest for freedom. And life is about the journey, not the destination. This is the time to be involved. This is when history is happening. This is when all the forces are coming together and when the enemy is putting their full weight behind tyranny because they know this critical time of change, this critical time of flux, this quickening is now accelerating. So get involved today. Realize you are important. Realize you're in the midst of incredible wonderment all around you, the human body, uh, the sky, the universe, all the science, the technology, our families, the cultures. It's fantastic what we're in the middle of. And just by realizing that, the tyranny of the global control freaks begins to end because we see what a joke they are compared to the rest of the universe. Don't be a robot. Take your destiny to be a free man or woman in your hands of every race, color, religion, and creed and realize that that quest to realize your own personal destiny is waiting for you if you stop following the messages of the globalist and simply look into your own heart and soul and see the common sense there that is diametrically opposed to everything the globalists have authored. For all of you that serve the system in closing, you're gonna be destroyed by it. It is about betraying. It is about fraud. It is about lies. It is about deceit. It is about pain and suffering. You are not getting power out of serving evil in the end. You're only getting temporary illusion of power. True power is giving yourself to justice, giving yourself to honor, giving yourself to true peace, giving yourself to help others and build up the world around you. And of course, to those of you out there fighting, I want to commend all of you because you heard the message that if you're listening or watching this transmission, you are the resistance. You know that's true and you've taken action. And you are shaking the foundations of the new world order because you are the resistance. Resistance is victory. Standing up against this evil and saying, I won't submit, will bring it down. That's why it always tells you that you have no power. And that is what I have to say on this July 4th, 2014. Until Sunday with a live radio show, 4 to 6 p.m., I'm Alex Jones signing off from the InfoWars.com command center in occupied North America. Alex Jones here for InfoWars.com. We're going to be intensifying our efforts to awaken free humanity to the scourge of the globalist in the month of July. And starting this July 4th, we are going to slash prices in a celebration of true Americana, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and the Declaration of Independence on all of the Made in America products that you will find at madein1776.com or infowarsstore.com. We're talking about Made in America belt buckles in brass and nickeled brass that state it loud and proud. Molon Labe, that's why we have the best-selling Made in America men's and women's Molon Labe infowars.com shirts. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a win-win. You vote with your dollars, you support the most hardcore organization out there for promoting true ideas of libertarianism, constitutionalism, basic human empowerment. But more importantly, you get t-shirts and belt buckles so you can meet like-minded people. So you have a conversation starter with friends and family and coworkers. We are reaching out to each other. And you also throw it in the face of the anti-gunners and the rest of the parasites out there that you're a free man and woman and that you're not going to be a slave, that, that, that you're not going to be intimidated to shut up by their tyranny that they call political correctness. That's why in the month of July, we have got giant specials on everything at MadeIn1776.com. But to expand the info war, we're offering the biggest special in the history, what is it, 13 years of Prison Planet 
Twitch.tv, our multimedia platform, we're offering the equivalent of more than five months free right now when you get a membership at PrisonPlanet.tv and you get 11 memberships that can be used with the same username and passcode so you can share it with friends and family. Now is the time to fund the war bonds. Now is the time to fund the info war. Now is the time to get aggressive. Now is the time to double down. Now is the time to realize you are the people that made the info war so successful and one of the leading lights worldwide against tyranny. You don't stand behind us, you stand right beside us. And I salute all of you on this July 4th, 2014 and going forward in the month of July and onward. This is about freedom worldwide and that desire for human dignity and self-determination that beats in the human breast. We are brothers and sisters together in the true spirit of liberty and the animating contest of liberty. And so I quote in closing the great Thomas Jefferson that I have sworn on the altar of God resistance against every form of tyranny. And never forget, if you are watching or listening to this transmission, you are the resistance.